here to share with us his insights about the legacy of the late former President Fidel V. Ramos, One News Defense Editor Manny Mugato. Manny, welcome uh, to the big good story. Good evening, Sean and Robbie. Mm. Manny, tama -tama, you were covering Malacanang. I time. covered the uh, former President Fidel Ramos when he was a general, when he mm. was the Armed Forces Chief of Staff. Uh, all throughout the years that Corrie was in power, Ramos defended her uh, fighting against Kudita. Mm. So all, all the attempts against Corrie, uh, Ramos defeated. Mm. You know? So when he ran for president, I was assigned by Manila Chronicle to cover him. And when he won, I was transferred to Malacanang. Mm. Uh, but I decided to leave uh, Chronicle in 1994, and that's how I ended my stint in Malacanang. Mm. But I still covered him because I work for a international news agency, and uh, we regularly interviewed mm. President Ramos at that time. Because I think among all presidents, from Cory up to Duterte, Ramos is the most accessible to the press mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he has all he has always uh, he always gives interview. Uh, exclusive interview to all reporters who re requested it. And every week, every Wednesday, he has a press conference, mm -hmm. whether in Manila or somewhere else where uh, he's visiting, he always gives mm. press uh, conferences. Mm. Hey, oh, Manny, you know? I mean, every time we talk about, sorry, Sean, yeah. uh, every time we, we, we talk about Ramos, lahat ng binanggit mo, di ba? In, even the starting point, di ba? Everybody yeah. starts with people power, uh, every time everything, everybody starts with um, his stint uh, and his rise uh, to the, the Philippine constabulary, mm -hmm. president, and so on. But what is, is there anything about him that people actually forget? Well, uh, many people forget that uh, he presided uh, over the country's energy problem. Mm -hmm. Because we had a debilitating power outages, mm. uh, because Cory Aquino did not build power plants, so mm. we had 12 hour brownouts mm -hmm. at that, uh, that mm. time in 1992. So it was a bitter pill that uh, Ramos had to swallow, uh, getting uh, suppliers to supply power generator, power, power, uh, power barges, barges, and then build uh, immediate uh, coal plants that are very expensive and uh, they're demanding higher ROIs for mm. their investment. So we had a very big power problem that uh, is very expensive. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And he had to provide the stopgap solution to that yes. as well as a yes. long-term strategy. Yes, because at that time, uh, if you are relying on gas turbines, mm. mahal, mahal. mahal mm. oh. So I think coal is the most affordable at the time. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think until now. Until now. Yeah. Until, until now. now. Mm. Actually, and, uh, 60 if I may... of our power supply is uh, generated by coal. Mm. I do remember that. That is my actually like the biggest thing that I attribute to President Ramos mm. because finally my electric fan and my ilaw na no. sa classroom. No, he brought, After uh, years of darkness. He brought Masinlok online. I yes. remember that. Uh, yeah. And the rotational brownout stopped during his time. But earlier we were interviewing uh, Secretary Bebot Bellio who was also his uh, secretary. Uh, and he, I asked him, what do you think is the biggest legacy that Ramos left? Out of all the, you know, like you said, there's so many stories about him. He's very, very accessible, very good-natured guy, right? And he said it was the peace process, which I found interesting because Secretary Bellio was not the defense secretary at that time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you look at his background, mm -hmm. he's a general, a military man. Mm -hmm. So you would think that he will be very strict very strong and dictatorial, maybe appointing soldiers in his cabinet. Mm -hmm. But he avoided that. Mm -hmm. And he made peace with all the rebels mm -hmm. that are fighting the government. The, the rightists, the RAM, SAP, YOU, mm -hmm. the Muslims in Mindanao, and the communist uh, insurgency. Mm -hmm. no? uh, and he was able to end the rightist movement. No, the RAM, YOU, SAP, because they signed the peace agreement with, uh, mm. with this government and many of the soldiers were instated. In fact, Benny became general, uh, Carlito Galvez became chief of staff. Mm. Mm. He was a YOU member. Uh, with the MNLF, uh, 
Nur Biswari signed a peace deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, he ended the Muslim rebellion. The only thing he left is the communist insurgency. Uh, there were a lot of documents that were made during his time. Mm -hmm. The Karil, uh, the Jasig. Uh, I think everything is going on track. Uh, but uh, his term ended. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you know that uh, what happened next. Mm -hmm. uh, during Estrada's time, the insurgency went up again. Mm -hmm. Because during uh, Fidel Ramos, the number of rebels went down from 26,000 at the height of at the peak of the insurgency during the last months of Marcos uh, to about 5,000 mm -hmm. during uh, uh, Ramos. Mm -hmm. When Strada came in, it went up again to 9,000. And uh, it was a hard dive until, well, Duterte was able to bring it down to 2,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, Manny Magato, maraming salamat for sharing those insights about the late President Fidel V. Ramos. More stories after the break. Keep it here on One News. Thank you.